I really hoped all my good friends were not sitting right up front because this is going to be a lot harder. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cody Normile, and tomorrow I'll be walking across the stage with all of you, a degree in economics, and I do not have a job. <laughs> now, while most other colleagues, colleges, universities, this may not be much of a qualifier, here at Bentley, we all know that it is a momentous occasion to receive that phone call extending an offer, one that many of us have worked towards day and night all four years. So for those of you who have traded in your youthful freedoms just for a paycheck, responsibilities, and your own place, I extend to you my deepest sympathies. <laughs> As who would want to live in Boston with your best friends when you could spend one more crazy summer with free food and laundry, hanging out with mom and dad? <laughs> but that is okay. I never associated employment with the culmination of my, more, my four years here. That will happen eventually. So when asked to talk about my Bentley experience, my mind automatically steered me elsewhere. Not to what I've been able to accomplish, but to, what I, but to what I've been able to witness. Roughly five years ago, on an early April day, I took my first, first tour at Bentley University. It was on a very warm Thursday afternoon with beautiful blue skies. I remember taking my place at the back of the group so I would not have to consistently make awkward eye contact with the tour guide as she walked backwards. As we progressed around the outside of La Cava, several different students called out to her from the picnic tables. As we squeezed through Einstein's, she was stopped twice by students leaving the library. As we walked through the trading room, and I thought of how I would spend all my time there, she was chatting with all of the employees. She introduced us to a slew of students leaving seasons as we entered, and was intercepted by the majority of athletes down on lower who were leaving the gym. It was as if she was famous. Every single person she walked by knew exactly who she was. Lastly, we walked across the green space, and while I wasn't listening to a word she said, she was preoccupied every several feet as we passed group after group of lounging students. While most of the other, un other individuals on the tour found it to be rude and frustrating, and perhaps it is just that weird necessity we feel to yell obscenities at any tour guide we know as they walk by, <laughs> I, was, I was intrigued. I asked her how so many people knew who she was, had she won some award that made her so well known on campus. She responded by saying, well, it's nothing that I have done. I simply try really hard to know all of them. Now, while I still find it prudent to yell at every single store guy, tour guide as they walk by, and I despise going to the trading room, it was not until several weeks ago, as I sat atop the green space, watching frisbees and footballs weave their way through the maze of blankets and lounging students for the last time, that her message finally hit home. I realized that my true Bentley experience, not what my resume says I did, not what the hundreds of Facebook photos claim that I did, but what I am truly appreciative to have accomplished during my time here was to be present for and recognize each of the experiences that defined all of your four years. It is recognizing the privilege in working with the STEP program, a wonderful group that in turn will teach you more about life, humility, and basketball than you could ever teach them about accounting and finance. It is being at Einstein's finishing breakfast when a good friend runs out of the library with an unending smile as they just received that phone call extending an offer for their dream job and understanding precisely what they sacrificed to get there. It is knowing that the same group of friends you made freshman year from Spruce Third, Oak, and Maple will still be the ones who consume all of your time and energy and foolishly sign apartment leases without any apparent source of income. <laughs> it is seeing the look on some of your faces when after countless hours of failed attempts to fully grasp GB concepts, it finally kicked in and the class becomes manageable once again. It is knowing that no matter how tired, downtrodden, or upbeat you are, a Dunkin' Donuts coffee just isn't the same unless Jeff or Mikkel serve it up with their daily antics. <laughs> it is witnessing your coworkers spend countless hours assisting and planning out tutoring sessions for the freshman or sophomore they work with at the expense of their own exam studies. It is understanding that while we were all locked up in our buildings with the Boston bombing suspects mere miles down the road, our campus belief, police, cafeteria staff, and administrators came in to ensure our safety regardless of their own agendas. And for that, we are forever grateful. It is realizing that even during a short vacation to the Bahamas, we still donated to the local community, whether through service projects at a local orphanage or old folks' home, or by losing hundreds of dollars at the casino. <laughs> it is that we were all lucky enough to work with or know administrators such as Leslie Doodle, too little. <laughs> I love you, Leslie, who, <laughs> who, even though she is certifiably insane as she stresses over matching her iPhone case to her outfit, can change your outlook on life in mere minutes. It is realizing that in five years, when the Observer comes in the mail, I will be able to turn the alumni section and brag to anyone who will listen 
as I point out all the extraordinary people I used to be classmates with, just before my mother yells at me to finish my chores. <laughs> it is whether you are students such as Spencer Torella, whose face blankets the walls of the admissions office and dreams of monetary policy in his sleep, or Angel King, who literally stopped traffic in the basement of Collins just to say hi, that you excelled in every aspect of your time here, increasing the value of everyone else around you. And it's for that reason, while I've accomplished many goals myself, I've accomplished exponentially more simply by being in the presence of all of you. I am honored to call you my friends and classmates. Thank you and congratulations. Hello, my name is Lindsay Elbert and this is Patrick McGoldrick and we are parts of the senior class cabinet. I will ask you all to please stand at this time. We pause now to remember those who have gone before us and whose love remains with us. In tribute to them, we stand in silence and say the names from our Bentley community. Kathleen Ann Ahern, Doris K. Bergamesca, Bob Bergantino, Walter Berkeley, Lloyd Buckley Jr., Benjamin Casanovas, Julia Casanovas, Loretta Cascone, Carissa J. Jaquette, Captain Rick Chanfionli, Professor Richard Cross, Pericles Perry Diamantopoulos, James Donovan, Terry Dooley, William Fafara, Gregory Fay, Imri Fadra, Gloria Fuller, Caroline Fung, Paul Galuck, Jacqueline Gerard, Alan Goldberg, Joan Hicks, Harriet Honeyman, Ephraim Irizarry, Michelle Jansen, Borge Gemston, Helen Johns, Gemma Lagas, Laurent Lagas, Thomas Lawless. James Allen Long, Mary McGuire, Leo Mason, Nemec Mergen, Leona Misdale, Dorothy L. Morrissey, Francis J. Morrissey, Maria Pia Munale, Georgia C. Murray, Edward P. Murray Jr., Teresa Ulet, Patrick Pirelli, Kelly Parisi, Edgar Pelletier, Harlindo Reyes, Paul Riley, Russell Rogers, Judith Ann Salmons, Lowell Sherman Salmons, Leanne Soak, Kay Spear, Frank St. Peter, Joseph L. Tryon, Victims of the Boston Marathon bombings, Marilyn Villano, Betty Warden, and John Warden, Gerald William Whitcomb, Sean Williams, and Professor Yvonne Yah. We pause for them. You may be seated.